guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new, my name is Melissa and this is my husband Eddie. He is in the military. Basically, this video is going to be for the ones obviously in the military and for the ones who are specifically moving to Guam. This is going to be a guide to PCSing to Guam. Um, basically, just what to expect when you come. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to talk about is what to bring. What do you think they should bring? I say, if you have any winter clothes, leave them. Leave if, them behind. If, yeah, if you can, leave them behind. If not, obviously bring them, because it never gets cold. Yeah, all you need is shorts, summer clothes, and an umbrella, because it does rain. We have been here for two years and still haven't bought an umbrella. Two but years that's, and a half. But that's just because we don't Wait, care for yeah. the hot rain. It's hot, it's not cold. Bring swimsuits, because swim swim there's beaches obviously all around the island and you need a, a lot yeah. of them. Cars, uh, you can bring your own. I suggest you bring your own cars from the States because if you don't, you can obviously buy it from the dealerships that we have here. But a lot of people like to sell Guam bombs, which are like shitty cars that people just like to drive around yeah, the drive. island. Since the island is not that big 30 miles long so yeah so it's 45 minutes to get to the tip if there's like not that much traffic i also wouldn't suggest to bring a nice car here because no the roads oh, oh and that because the roads suck like there's potholes everywhere yeah, yeah. it is normal to drive like this yeah. here they say that the cops will stop you if you drive straight rather than if you drive around the potholes. Because that's if, how you know you're drunk. Yeah, if you're if drunk, you you'll just be driving through them instead of around them. That's, the, that's what they say. The driving rules don't apply here. If you're living in the States, when you see a yellow flashing light, that usually means to do uh, a stop, look at if anybody's going, and then go, right? Like if you're at a four-way yeah, yeah. stop. Yeah, so like it'd be like a, a, it would turn into a stop sign in the States. Yeah. Here it's here, like, you just, just go keep going until you can. There's people not coming and then you... You basically yeah. go when you want to. Yeah. And then and the red lights, if it turns yellow to red, they'll still be like four... Four cars four, going. Yeah, like four more cars at once it hits red still going. So, see a green light, just go green. I would kind of slow down, make sure there's no people going still. Living situations. There's some houses on base with more bedrooms and stuff. Ours is two bedroom, one bath. But that's because we don't have kids. Yeah, right? but if you have kids, I've seen or I've heard of like... Houses that have like three bedrooms or like the officer's housing way bigger, but obviously there's still off base housing and there's like a like a closed community where it's gated and that's where most military people live. So if you want to live on base, you need to put into perspective that they don't have backyards, uh, like fence backyards. Also, you have to keep up to date with cutting your grass and keeping it clean. A positive is that you get to keep your AC on all the time, especially yeah, especially with this Guam heat. It's pretty good to have. Electricity, water, obviously all that is free. So you can you can run it, take a long shower, AC all that. We never turn off the AC since we got here unless the power goes out. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons. If you go off base, you can, ha you can limit yourself and pocket the money or if you stay on base, no extra money, but you can use as much as you want. Yeah. So it's really up to you how you, you like to live. We enjoy it here, but our next base, we want to live off house, or I'm sorry. Off base. I would suggest if this is your first um, PCS, like it's your first ever base, then I would suggest living on base, especially if you're young. I don't know. That's what I would do. That's what I did do. Yeah. At first, we we're like, we want to live off base, but now that we're here, it's kind of like it made it easier for both of us to, I don't know, mold how we live around the military because it's definitely a big change from civilian world. And I know a lot of people, um, sometimes Eddie says it too, like, he doesn't want to be living so close to his work. Yeah, so that's another thing. <laughs> if you want to live off base, you don't have to be into the military scene 24-7. Yeah, because it feels like I never leave the military even when I'm home because you're still on base and you yeah. still hear the, the big voice, which is like the speaker phones and you get called in first because you live close. To it. The Air Force base is like right here and then the Navy base is like an yeah. hour away. I'd say 45 with no traffic, maybe an yeah. hour with traffic. Depending on more. traffic, but it's a it's a small island going back to uh when you're pcsing and bringing your home goods i suggest you make a list of all the stuff you're bringing because well they make the list for you but be there when they do it because when i left i made my parents do it but because we were already heading over here right yeah we were already here when they were packing they missed checking the thing and they stole my ps4 
all my games. I think that was it, but it still sucks. Yeah. You know, that's five, six hundred dollars at the window yes. that we had to replace. So I would suggest you make a list as well as them, they'll do it. But just to make sure you have everything you brought. If you guys don't know where Guam is, it is like three hours east of Japan, so it's really far away from the States. Yeah. So it's really expensive to fly home. I'd say like around twelve to thirteen hundred if you're going west coast and probably like two or three hundred dollars more to go east coast per person round trip so save up or fly space a which is actually where i work so if you guys have any questions on that maybe in the future we can do a video about that but space a is basically if there's any seats available on any military aircrafts um that they're releasing you can fly for free to go anywhere that plane is going so most of the planes go hickam california so that's you know even if you live in the east coast it, a ticket from California to East Coast is two, three hundred dollars round trip, so you'll save thousands of dollars. So that's a good way to fly home. But if you're fortunate enough to fall in our situation where we both work, you can save up way easier and be able to fly home in your and, own expense. I and mean, it saves your leave, and that way you can experience more time with your family. And always watch for the prices um, for flights because they always change. Yeah, we bought ours like five months in advance and we say I think like six hundred dollars just doing that so there's no street sign in, or there's some street signs in Guam but most of them aren't even there so basically when someone tells you directions they tell you the main street and then the closest building to it yeah so I'll go down the main road route one and then turn left at uh, circle, Applebee's yeah circle K or something you, you'll learn at first we yeah. were like we're where like, do we where go but that? now it's honestly really easy like they'll yeah. be like oh turn before gpo which is a, 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 mall, a mall and then blah, blah blah talking about malls there's not a lot of shopping here but we adjusted we have forever 21 which is like a main thing yeah. for me papaya we have ross yeah. kmart which is supposedly the, the biggest kmart in the world yeah so. i think it is it's pretty big and then food wise we don't have a variety from the states. Yeah, there's no in and out Hardee's or Carl's Jr. Starbucks. There's not a lot, but they also have a lot. So they yeah. have Jack in the Box, Taco Bell, Subway, Popeyes, yeah. Charlie. I suggest you guys try the local food yeah, and love it because so you're good. gonna love it. It's yeah, so it's, good. It's really amazing. I yeah. love it. Um, I gain a lot of weight from it, but hey, we're young and enjoying life, so why not? The language here. Um, <laughs> Some people, they think of Guam and they think it's like a foreign... Super foreign country, but yeah. it's, it's really like... It's just like the states, yeah. just... Small accent. Most of the time, they hide their accents when they talk to you, and they only really express it a lot when they're talking to each other. But even then, you yeah, can Yeah, when, uh, when you get here, they speak English. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you won't even know that they're locals. So don't be scared when you come here and think, oh my god, no one's gonna understand me. Yeah. It's gonna be so different for me. No, it's the same. One thing I, I do want to say is that there is a lot of tourists here. A yeah. lot Japanese, of Japanese Korean. people. There might be a lot of rude people walking by you and then <laughs> not knowing how to apologize, but yeah. I don't know if that's normal. They're but. used to it over there. They're used to just so many people, so they just walk into yeah, each other, but you'll get used to it. Like I said, we even when we first got here, it wasn't any culture shock. We were just yeah. like, oh, it's so beautiful, blah, 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 the food. Some people don't like it, and I think it's because they don't go to the beaches, the hikes, the the things. That, like, even though it's tourist trap, they call it, we still go to it because it's fun stuff to do. And usually most of the tourist trap, they'll have locals, uh, local or military discounts. Going down the Telefofo River, you need to go kayaking. We do have a vlog of that, so yeah. you guys can watch it. I'll it was pretty it. cheap too. We spent like maybe hundred dollars for both of us. It was like like a six or seven hour total. You kayak, they feed you, you watch yeah. a show, they do like fire things. It's yeah. I'll it, leave the description to yeah. that video down below. Don't stay in your houses and say, oh my gosh, this place is lame. All they have is the beach, because they have so much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> cradles. You okay, dude? There is a Guam hikes book. Uh, we maybe have done seven of them. Yeah, like seven or eight. Yeah. A lot of the main ones and ones that not a lot of people know of. Yeah. So but, just talk to the locals. But I'll it's so you. much fun. Go with people that obviously know how to get there because we've gotten lost a couple times and it was pretty hot. 
It but was, it, was it was fun. It was super fun though. They did just open up a sky zone. So oh, yeah. for the young ones, if you guys like that kind of stuff. Or take your kids if you got kids and you've never experienced it before. I've never been there, but we yeah. should be going there soon, probably make a video. If you guys do have families on both the Navy base and the Air Force base, they both have a bowling alley, which oh, yeah. I love we, bowling. We go there yeah. a lot. We eat pizza, bowl. Yeah, have so fun. much fun. One important thing that we did want to mention is the toads, the frogs here. If you guys have pets, the toads are poisonous. And if they, they like lick it like hard. If like they, they bite into it or yeah. lick it, they can most likely die or get sick. Yeah, but you like would have throw to take up. you'd have to take them to the vet like right away. Yeah. But they get like they're bigger than that. Like they get huge. huge. And they're like raw car I think they're called cane toads or something like that. I don't know, but, but but one day we were coming home and there was a big toad right just front. sitting in front of our front door like, like literally I was like what is that and then I and, and he was trying to move it like being nice just trying to scoot it away and it just did not leave it was the like front hissing like yeah and like and puffing huge. its back up so Eddie decided to kick the thing I, I meant to like pick it up and kind of fling it and no. I don't know I did too much power and I threw it like 20 feet in the air it, it like, went on the roof it went on the roof landed and it fell. fell and we haven't seen it since when you take your dogs out what we always do is open it look in the in the grass everywhere yeah. and then we keep one dog on the leash because he's crazy and then Cora we just we just keep an eye on them don't leave yeah. them out there if you guys are animal lovers do expect a lot of strays to yep. be out on the streets. Puppies, and, old. And maybe some dead ones because some some people here just don't care. Like, they just see them as animals. Not saying everybody, but yeah. that's, that that's, goes, that that's goes, everywhere in the world. Yeah, that goes for everywhere in the world. They're, but but here, it's just here, it's so constant. Yeah, since the island is so small. You'll see it. You'll see it everywhere and it's just sad, but... You got you get used to it. Yeah, there's a lot I mean, of I great. Sad still, but. There's a lot of great communities I see on the Facebook page that there's like groups of animal rescue. Blah, yeah. Just follow, just look up Guam Animal Rescue, something like that. I think that's all that we have for you guys today. I really hope you guys enjoyed our guide to PCSing to Guam. And uh, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And we will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>